Sonny Franzese, in and out of jail most of his life, was the underboss or the number two guy in the Colombo crime family. He holds the record for being the first centurion held in a federal prison. Yet in his heyday, this little old man was a mafia member whose name struck dread into the hearts of rival crime families and New Yorkers alike. In today's Bite Size episode, we're examining the life of Sonny Franzese, an Italian immigrant turned infamous underboss of the Colombo crime family. From his early days in Naples to his rise through the ranks of the criminal hierarchy in the Big Apple, we'll delve into his reign as the family's second in command as well as his connections to a star-studded world that included icons like Frank Sinatra and Marilyn Monroe. Stay tuned to learn about Franzese's criminal odyssey marked by power, controversy, and a notorious trial that earned him the nickname The Nodfather. As we dive into Sonny Franzese, the Colombo family's feared underboss. John Sonny Franzese was born on February 6, 1917 in Naples, Italy to Carmine Franzese and Maria Corvola, U.S. immigrants who were visiting Italy. They eventually returned to their home in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, where his father managed a bakery. As a child, he was nicknamed Sonny by his mother, a nickname that stayed with them for life, striking fear into many hearts. As a member of one of New York City's infamous five families, Sonny Franzese began his rise through the ranks of the Colombo criminal family in the 1930s. Under the guidance of Joseph Profaci and sometimes known as Junior, Franzese gained his stripes as a respected and sworn member. Trouble found Franzese early on, resulting in his first arrest for assault in 1938. In 1942, he was drafted into the United States Army, but he was dismissed the same year owing to concerns about his mental condition. In 1947, he was accused of rape amid murders of troubling behavior, but he was never arrested. Undeterred, Franzese continued his involvement with organized crime, concentrating on racketeering, fraud, and loan sharking. He frequented the famed Copacabana nightclub, where he regularly met celebrities such as Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr., and even claimed to have had an affair with Marilyn Monroe. He also followed celebrities in the sporting arena, including the famous middleweight boxer Rocky Graziano. His climb through the Colombo family ranks was steady, and he became a made man in 1950, meaning that he took the oath of Omerta, the mafia code of honor and silence. He worked as part of the group led by Sebastian Buster Alloy, and eventually rose to more important positions, being appointed a capo regime or captain by Profaci in the 1950s, then being promoted to underboss by Joseph Colombo in early 1963. Franzese had ties to the film business, serving as an associate producer on the 2003 film This Thing of Ours, and assisting in the financing of successful films such as Deep Throat in 1972 and The Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 1974. Franzese's illegal business dealings grew as well, including Buddha Records, a recording firm in which he acquired a financial stake in 1967. This venture provided him with the means to launder illegal revenues and bribe disc jockeys. In addition, he entered the music industry by interacting with Nate McCalla, owner of Kala Records, and profited from this connection until McCalla's terrible murder in 1980. Franzese's very criminal career lasted decades, taking him from the streets of Brooklyn to the glamorous world of entertainment, leaving a legacy that will live on in the annals of organized crime history. In 1964, a serious charge was leveled against Franzese, alleging that he was implicated in the murder of Ernest Rupolo, a former hitman turned informant from the Genovese criminal family. Rupolo died in a horrible manner, having been shot and stabbed before being drowned in Jamaica Bay with concrete-bound feet and tied wrists. Franzese was arrested along with nine others on April 13, 1966, and his trial put him into the spotlight. Prosecution records indicated a shocking toll, claiming he was involved in the killings of 30 to 50 people. However, despite this, he was cleared of the murder charge. Nonetheless, on March 3, 1967, Franzese's situation changed dramatically. In 1965, he was convicted in Albany, New York, of plotting a run of four bank robberies around the country. As a result, he was sentenced to 50 years in the United States Penitentiary in Leavenworth, Kansas 
The sentence was handed down by Judge Jacob Mishier, and despite repeated appeals, Franzese's request for leniency was denied. While jailed, his son Michael said that Franzese assured him that he would complete the entire sentence. Despite his absence, his nephew Salvatore Franzen took over his gambling business. Franzese's taste of freedom was fleeting after he was released on parole in 1978. A parole breach led to his return to prison in 1982. However, a second release in 1984 provided some relief. Surprisingly, he managed to avoid fresh criminal accusations until 2008. Nonetheless, repeating parole offenses sent him back to prison, creating a recurring loop in his life. Franzese had a conversation with Colombo associate Gaetano Guy Fatato in 2006, unaware of Fatato's status as a government informant. Unknowingly recorded, Franzese revealed details about his involvement in many murders, showing a tally that exceeded a handful. During the climactic discussions, Franzese revealed his plan for evading detection. He acknowledged using nail paint on his fingertips before committing murder to avoid leaving incriminating fingerprints. He also advised wearing a hairnet to prevent DNA analysis from hair strands found at the crime scene. Surprisingly, Franzese emphasized the importance of properly disposing of the victim's body. His gruesome method included dismembering the body parts in a kiddie pool, drying them in a microwave, and finally disposing of them using a commercial gray garbage disposal. Today, you can't have a body no more. It's better to take that half an hour an hour to get rid of the body than it is to leave the body on the street. Following the conviction of John Jackie de Ross in 2004, Franzese was once more promoted to Colombo family underboss in 2005, marking his first return to a leadership post since his incarceration in 1967. This stint, however, was short-lived, as he faced many prison sentences, including a parole violation in May 2007. While still imprisoned, Franzese faced a spate of indictments in June 2008. These charges included involvement in murders during the Colombo Wars in the early 1990s, fur coat thefts in New York City in the mid-1990s, and home invasions in Los Angeles in 2006 while acting as police officers. In June 2008, he was charged with racketeering, conspiracy, robbery, extortion, narcotics trafficking, and loan sharking. Despite being freed from custody on December 24, 2008, Franzese's legal fights became more intense as a result of his son, John Franzese Jr., cooperating with the authorities as an informant. This collaboration resulted in key revelations, such as Franzese Sr. extorting strip clubs, running loan shark activities, and extorting a pizzeria. On January 14, 2011, the 93-year-old Franzese Sr. was sentenced to eight years in prison. It was then that he was nicknamed the Nod Father for nodding off during his trial. The elderly mobster's health issues were considered against his conviction, with Franzese Jr.'s evidence as a crucial element. He was denied compassionate release in July 2016 and remained in prison until June 23, 2017, when he was freed from the Federal Medical Center in Devons, Massachusetts at the age of 100. Franzese Sr., the oldest federal inmate in the United States, was released at the end of a criminal voyage that spanned decades and left an indelible impact on the annals of organized crime history. With eight children, 18 grandchildren, and six great-grandchildren, Franzese had a large family. His son Michael studied pre-med but left to help the family once his father was sentenced to prison. As a result of his own criminal activities, Michael was sentenced to 10 years incarceration in 1986, but following his release in 1994, retired from the Mafia and moved to California in 1995. John Franzese Jr., Franzese's younger son, went from being a Colombo family associate to an FBI informant. He gave compelling evidence that led to the conviction of his father, Sonny, recorded by the wire he wore when talking to his father. The father and son reconciled in 2019 following Sonny's release on June 23, 2017, with Franzese Jr. having left the witness protection program and visited his father in a nursing home. Sonny Franzese died of natural causes on February 24, 2020, at the age of 103 in a New York City hospital. His funeral was held on February 28 at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church, followed by burial at St. John's Cemetery.
As a career criminal, the value of Sonny's legacy is arguable. However, while he may have gained massive regard within the Mafia for upholding his Omerta oath, his true legacy can be found in his two sons who trod very different paths, John turning informant and Michael, who had once followed in his father's criminal footsteps, becoming a born-again Christian and speaker. Those who live by the sword usually die by the sword. However, in the case of the Colombo family's long-serving member, Sonny Franzese, his reward for a life of crime was an old age spent in a prison cell.